it is mathematically impossible to tax mm-hmm. our way out of this. Uh, in order to stabilize the debt long term, you need non-interest savings that gradually rise to about 6% of GDP mm-hmm. outside of interest. I did a report last year on taxing the rich that showed that realistically you can only get about 1% of GDP in higher revenues if you set all upper income taxes at the highest possible rates mm-hmm. at the revenue maximizing level and you adjusted for the economic damage that would create, mm-hmm. you'd get 1% to 2% of GDP. Just to put a finer point on this, if you seized every dollar of every billionaire's wealth mm-hmm. in America, their home, their car, their stocks, their vacation mm-hmm. houses, their yachts, their businesses, you could fund the government one time for nine months. Yeah. That's it. If you assessed 100% tax rates over 500000 a year, you still wouldn't balance the budget. Yeah. So taxing the rich should be on the table because yeah. everything needs to be on the table. But when I hear lawmakers down to people on Twitter say, all we have to do is tax the rich and it'll pay for mm-hmm. everything, that is spectacularly mathematically false. Right. And you show actually that according to OECD data and the OECD or advanced economies, the United States actually has the most progressive tax code. We have the so most So we are taxing the rich. The rich pay a higher percentage of government revenue in the U.S. than in any other OECD Substantially country. Substantially more. And it's, it's, it's because we tax the rich at a similar level as other countries. In mm-hmm. fact, our, our, our highest rates are actually higher right. for other countries. But we tax the non-wealthy so much less than mm-hmm. other countries that it makes us more progressive. Right. Yeah, and it's what about ten percent? The upper ten percent of income uh, earners in the U.S. pay about ninety percent. Yeah, of the, the upper twenty percent. The the highest twenty percent of earners pay ninety percent of all income right. taxes. The bottom half collectively pays zero. Yeah. So does that mean, in order to balance the budget, that we have to tax the middle class, or we have to tax more? A, a wider range of income earners. Here's the part that makes me really unpopular with all our mm-hmm. audiences. When you, if you try to build a stable budget for the mm-hmm. next 30 years, and I don't mean stable, I, I don't mean balance the budget. I mean just yeah. one small enough deficits that the debt share of GDP stays at about 100%. You can't really get there on spending cuts alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to cut that 5.5% of GDP you can't really find 5.5% of GDP in reasonable cuts. You're going to have to have some revenue. And if taxing the rich is limited, there's going to be higher middle class taxes. Right. This is just a mathematical reality. As I explained in my dispatch article, you can't stabilize the debt with revenues at 17% of GDP. Right. Spending is going to 30 Mm-hmm. you're not going to get spending all the way down that low. Right. And you can't get there from taxing the rich. So- Middle class taxes are going to rise. Is that primarily, where is that going to be? Is that, I mean, part of it, and I guess this wouldn't necessarily be middle class, but uh, payroll taxes, which get capped for Social Security mm-hmm. at what, 168000 Yeah, 168000 Inflation's been yeah, pumping yeah, so, it up. Um, but so that, the caps get taken off of that and that will increase some, but that's not middle class people. Like what, what that's, will it that, mean? That's the taxing the rich part. Yeah. So if, uh, what's the median household income now? 76,000? Approximately. Something like that. Yeah. What, you know, what will they be paying in taxes, you know, 10 years down the road versus now? It, if... it, it, it remains to be seen. I, I, yeah. can't, I can't give a number. I think mm-hmm. people are surprised to hear though that the median earning family in America today pays an effective income tax rate of 2%. Mm -hmm. And people say, I I pay more than that. If you actually adjust for what they actually pay with the child credits and sometimes Mm -hmm. the EITC, the middle earning family pays an effective income tax rate of 2%. And then they pay an effective payroll tax of about 10% Mm -hmm. when you count the employer portion. So they do pay payroll, but it's going to go up from Mm -hmm. that. And the question is, eventually is, is are we going to do most of this through payroll taxes and a value added tax, which right. is like a national sales tax and or through income in taxes? Europe, that is everything. Right? We are the yeah. only country in the OECD that does not have a value added tax. Mm-hmm. I would like to keep it that way. Right. Why? Why? What's bad about value added tax? Value added taxes are actually more efficient than income taxes if you're starting a government from scratch because mm-hmm. you're taxing consumption. 
The danger, though, is value-added taxes are a cash cow. Mm -hmm. Once you start with a 1% rate, it's so easy to raise it to higher rates Mm -hmm. and collect a huge amount of revenue. And my concern is I wouldn't mind replacing the income Mm -hmm. tax with a value-added tax, but I don't want to get to the point where families are paying large income taxes and large value-added taxes because then you're burying families. If we're going to... I, you know, a lot of conservatives have said if we're going to switch to a consumption tax, the income tax needs to be destroyed, right. burned, and salted the earth first. 